Sandra Bullock adopted her son Lewis in 2010 and kept his life relatively private for many years. Sandra said she always wanted to expand her family, but only when Lewis said he was ready for a sibling did she feel the time was right. Discover Lewis' journey to adulthood and see how he has changed over time. A fascinating look at America's beloved celebrity family. With her son Lewis by her side, Sandra Bullock has been making public appearances, giving us some rare glimpses of her. Let's take a look back at the boy's early years and explore the origins of this beloved star. If you're curious about Sandra, let's start with the basics. She was born on July 26, 1964, in Arlington County, Virginia. From a young age, Sandra's natural talent shone through. She is the daughter of two remarkable individuals who lived very different lives and careers. Her mother, Helga Matilda Meyer, was a talented opera singer from Germany. She not only performed but also taught singing, inspiring generations of artists. Her father, John Wilson Bullock, followed a different path. He was born in Birmingham, Alabama, and served in the U.S. Army. Not only did he ensure the delivery of mail and military supplies throughout Europe, but he also became a music teacher like his wife. The love story between John and Helga began when John was stationed in Nuremberg, Germany, where they met and quickly fell in love. They later married and started a family. Upon returning to the United States, John took a new job in Arlington, working for the Army Materiel Command, before becoming a contractor at the Pentagon. Few people know that Sandra was not an only child. She had a younger sister, Jacine Bullock Prado, who played an important role in Sandra's life later on. Jacine became a lawyer and a famous baker, but the bond between the two sisters was always strong supporting each other throughout their careers and lives. Sandra would later collaborate with Gesina at her production firm, Fortis Films, where Gesina eventually served as president. You probably guessed right, Sandra had an unusual childhood. She resided in various locations apart from Arlington for 12 years, including the historic districts of West Germany's Nuremberg and Austria's Salzburg and Vienna. With minimal effort, she could transition between German and English. It doesn't help that she wasn't a typical student either. Sandra attended a Waldorf school in Nuremberg, which is known for its innovative approach to education and its emphasis on the arts and the development of the imagination. But Sandra's life was bustling with far more interesting events at the moment. Sandra frequently accompanied Helga as she sang in opulent opera venues around Europe. While she wasn't spending time with her mother, she hung out with her Aunt Crystal and cousin Suzanne, who was about to embark on a new chapter of her life as the wife of politician Peter Ramsauer. Sandra was able to pick up new information by following these folks. She took voice and dancing lessons and would occasionally perform with her mother in minor opera roles. She also sang her heart out in the Nuremberg Children's Chorus. Nevertheless, Sandra also had a tough time of it at one point. Sandra has a little scar above her left eye from a childhood accident in which she fell into a brook. She will always remember this mark. Sandra sought German citizenship in 2009 despite being born in the United States. Germany had an important role in her life. She came back to the U.S. at a later date and went to Washington Lee High School there. She showed early promise of a career in show business by joining the cheerleading squad and acting in school plays. Sandra continued her education in Greenville, North Carolina, at East Carolina University after she graduated in 1982. She received her BFA in 1987 after majoring in theater there. She showcased her acting skills in theater productions such as Peter Pan and Three Sisters. This is the point at which everything changed. Sandra relocated to the exciting and limitless metropolis of Manhattan, New York, after completing her undergraduate degree. Living in the Big Apple was no picnic. Sandra had to work odd jobs to make ends meet. While she was still in the auditioning process, she managed to work her way up to cocktail waitress, bartender, and even coat checker at exclusive restaurants. Sandra had to put in a lot of time and effort to reach the Broadway lights, although they were close by. When Sandra was in New York, she couldn't do anything but move around. She honed her acting skills in lessons with the renowned Sanford Meisner. Before landing a part in the off-Broadway production No Time Flat, she began performing in student films. This seemingly little part would alter the course of her career in ways she could never have imagined. A filmmaker by the name of Alan Jay, 
Levi took notice. After seeing her perform, he gave her a role in the 1989 TV movie Bionic Showdown, which also featured the $6 million man and bionic woman. That was only the start. Sandra quickly rose through the rank, landing supporting parts in a number of indie films before landing the lead in the 1990 National Broadcasting Company TV adaptation of Working Girl. Sandra continued to climb the ladder of success in the early 90s as her path finally gained speed. Love Potion Num. Night, The Thing Called Love, and Fire on the Amazon were among her 1992-1993 film credits. But it was her 1993 part in the science fiction action flick Demolition Man that truly made an impression. With each job she landed, Sandra cemented her place in Hollywood history. Something out of the usual occurred in 1994. A remarkable breakthrough by Sandra. Sandra landed a role that would profoundly impact her life. She co-starred with Keanu Reeves as Annie Porter in the film Speed. Strangely, Keanu was just starting in the acting world. Terrorists had rigged a bus to detonate at a specific speed. The plot revolved around this vehicle. Sandra portrayed the role of Annie, a bus passenger who found herself in a desperate situation and had to take control of the vehicle. But first, she had to do an audition for the film to determine whether she and Keanu had any connection before she was cast. It has to have been. Upon its premiere, it became one of the year's most financially successful films, grossing millions of dollars. Sandra was the first person to come up in conversation after everyone else. The Saturn Award for Best Actress and the Music Television Movie Award for Best Female Performance were both presented to her for her performance. Sandra Bullock continued her acting career after she made her formal Hollywood debut. Later in her career, she took on more captivating parts. She performs in the romantic comedy film While You Were Sleeping, which was released in 1995. In the film, she plays the part of a token collector for the Chicago Transit Authority who is responsible for saving the life of a man. It turned out that the movie was a huge success, and the critics were enchanted by Sandra's acting abilities once more, which were praised as being extremely skilled. Sandra was a part of a separate film called The Net, which was released in the same year that she was nominated for a Golden Globe Award in the category of Best Actress. She played the role of a computer specialist who finds herself in the heart of a perilous intrigue in this particular production. Her performance was successful once more, and the film was yet another commercial success at the box office. The next year, in 1998, she was cast in the film Hope Floats, which tells the story of a housewife whose life is turned upside down when... Her husband confesses his infidelity on a talk show they were watching together. Sandra was praised for her ability to successfully combine comedy and drama in the picture, which also performed well at the box office. After that, Sandra was cast in a part that brought her into the realm of magic and curses. Although she portrayed a witch in the film Practical Magic starring Nicole Kidman, the picture did not do as well as was anticipated, even though the idea of the film was intriguing. On the other hand, Sandra did not slow down. Making Sandwiches was the title of the short film that she directed, produced, and wrote. She proceeded to take on different roles and even tried her hand at directing, producing, and writing. By the late 1990s, Sandra had established herself as a well-known figure. She had a starring role in the romantic comedy Forces of Nature which was directed by Ben Affleck and told the story of a free-spirited lady who causes a writer's life to be turned upside down. Sandra's connection with her co-star was once again acclaimed because the movie was a huge success. As the new century began, Sandra began playing a character that would go on to become one of the most memorable roles she has ever played. In the comedy Miss Congeniality, she plays the role of a Federal Bureau of Investigation agent who transforms herself into a beauty pageant entrant in order to conceal her identity. Sandra received yet another nomination for a Golden Globe for her role in the film, which was met with widespread acclaim. Sandra's career continued to flourish as she took on further roles in films that received positive reviews from critics. Her performance in the movie Crash, which was released in 2004 and went on to win the Academy Award for Best Picture, was part of a big ensemble cast to which she contributed. Her performance was acclaimed as one of the greatest of her career by the writers and critics. Nevertheless, her exceptional career is not the only thing for which she has been recognized. 
In the end, Sandra was successful in concealing the fact that she had adopted children for a considerable amount of time. What were the factors that brought about this sequence of events? The events that were taking place in her personal life provide a significant amount of context for this. The difficulties that she faces in her relationships. At the beginning of the 1990s, Sandra was working on a television show called Love Potion Num. She was engaged to the actor Tate Donovan at the time. Nine, although, indeed, they were together for three years. The relationship did not continue very long, as is typically the case with couples in the entertainment industry. The fact is, however, that Sandra's experience in the realm of romantic relationships did not come to an end there. Many people have speculated that she is romantically involved with football player Troy Aikman, as well as actors Matthew McConaughey and Ryan Gosling. Each of these individuals is involved in her life differently. Nevertheless, the most unexpected event in Sandra's romantic life occurred on July 16, 2005, when she tied the knot with Jesse James. Monster Garage was a television series that he hosted in addition to being a motorcycle builder. He was also a motorcycle constructor. Initially, they had gotten together in a manner that was somewhat peculiar. During the holiday season, Sandra intended for her godson, who is 10 years old, to have the opportunity to meet Jesse. However, as is the case with the majority of situations, it is not always a happy ever after for a couple that is in love. During the month of November 2009, Sandra and Jesse experienced a disagreement about child custody, although it was not with each other. Janine Lindemulder, a model who had previously appeared in pornographic films, was Jesse Lindemulder's second wife, following the birth of their daughter. Who is now five years old, custody of the child became a contentious issue between the couple. In the end, Sandra and Jesse were awarded full legal custody of their child after what had been a contentious and emotionally charged dispute was eventually resolved. It seemed as though they had finally reached a state of equilibrium. Meanwhile, in March 2010, Sandra was confronted with a scandal that shook her whole life. In the controversy that she was involved in, she was subjected to inappropriate treatment at the hands of a few male law enforcement agents. Furthermore, rumors began to circulate in the public sphere that Jesse had cheated on her while they were married. There were a few ladies who came from the shadows to reveal that they had been involved in romantic relationships together with him. It was a horrible piece of news. Even though Sandra had always made it a point to keep her personal life out of the public eye, she was compelled to withdraw from the promotional tours she was going to do for her film, The Blind Side, in Europe because of some personal concerns. The rumors continued, and on March 18th, Jesse decided to put a stop to the suspicions that people had been having. It was in public that he expressed his regret to Sandra, acknowledging that the majority of the charges were untrue, but also accepting full responsibility for the suffering that he had caused. Not only did he express his need for forgiveness from Sandra, but he also sought it from their children. When the story became more widespread, Jesse decided to check himself into a rehabilitation center on March 30th. He did this in the hopes of resolving his difficulties and preserving his marriage. But by that point, it was too late. Sandra filed for divorce in Austin, Texas, on April 23rd, citing a conflict of personalities as the basis for her decision regarding the divorce. Even though their divorce was finalized on the 28th of June, there was still a glimmer of optimism despite all of the upheaval. Sandra realized that in addition to one's work and relationships, other aspects of one's life define them. She had been searching for genuine happiness in her life, and it took the form of two lovely children to fulfill that need. Sandra's life was altered as a result of the adoption. Sandra had already started the process of adopting a kid by the time she filed for divorce from her husband. She welcomed a newborn boy from New Orleans, Louisiana, into her life in January of 2010. He was born in those months. The fact is that there were several inquiries. Do you think Sandra was doing this by herself? Initially, she and Jesse had begun the adoption process jointly, but, following their breakup, Sandra decided to proceed with the adoption from a single parent's perspective. She did not reveal the news of her kid until after the Oscars, which took place in March. And when she did ultimately make the announcement, the world witnessed a mother who was resolute in her commitment to providing the finest life that was possible for her kid. She adopted a second kid, a girl who was three years old, 
in December 2015, which resulted in the expansion of Sandra's family once again. By appearing on the cover of People magazine beside her daughter, she demonstrated to the world that her heart was filled with love. She did this with great pride and shared the news with the audience. The year 2015 was the year that Sandra discovered love once more. And this time it was with a photographer called Brian Randall. They had a life together for many years, going through both difficult and happy times together as a unit. Brian, who had been suffering from amyotrophic lateral sclerosis, ALS, passed away in August of 2023. Life tends to shock you. It was an illness that was both harsh and unrelenting. With time, Sandra has been raising her children by herself. Nevertheless, they are no longer the infants that they were nearly ten years ago. The Development of Sandra's Younger Children The process that Sandra went through to become a mother was not typical. During her younger years, she did not have any children. Instead, when she was in her late forties, she adopted Louis and Layla and brought them into her life through the process of adoption. Sandra frequently asserts that she was destined to wait till there was a perfect opportunity for her to become a mother. The universe informed her that she was supposed to wait, despite the fact that she was eager and nervous at the beginning of the process. Now, she is happy that she paid attention. She considers herself extremely fortunate to be able to see the development of her children, and as a result, she has decided to take a sabbatical from performing. She has made it quite obvious that she is not going to retire, but she has also stated that she will not be appearing in front of the camera for some time. She would rather spend her time with her children because she wants to make sure that she does not lose out on any memories that she may build with them via her absence. Since January 2010, when he was only three and a half months old, Sandra has been raising her son, Louis, in her home. On the other hand, Sandra had a specific connection to Louis even before she had the opportunity to meet him. She distinctly recalls that when Hurricane Katrina struck New Orleans, she had an unshakable conviction that her kid was within her grasp, waiting for her to arrive. When they did eventually meet, it was as if they had been reunited. Sandra referred to Louis as perfect and stated that she got the impression that he had been a part of her life from the beginning. Louis developed into a little gourmet as he grew older which means that he delighted in everything that had to do with eating. Do not be concerned. All of the beverages that he mixed were non-alcoholic. Initially, he was extremely into making cocktails. After that, he began cooking boba. And after that, he wanted to deep fry whatever he could get his hands on, particularly if it was wrapped in sugar. He was not satisfied with anything else. Sandra can't help but giggle whenever she talks about Louis and his culinary escapades. Lewis is always attempting something new in the kitchen, and Sandra finds this humorous. Being Lewis's mother, on the other hand, is not without its share of difficulties. On account of the fact that Sandra is a white mother and Lewis is an African-American child, it is possible that their experiences in the world will be distinct from one another. This is something that Sandra takes very seriously, and she makes it a point to discuss subjects of significance with Louis, particularly as he gets older. She wants to make sure that he is well prepared for the world in which he is growing up. Having said that, he is also extremely sensitive and intelligent more than his years dictate. The instant Sandra touched him, she recognized that he possessed a particular spiritual bigness that she had noticed ever since. Sandra frequently compares him to an elderly comic who is knowledgeable and wise. Although she occasionally fears that she might not be able to measure up to the incredible person that Lewis is meant to be, she is making every effort to be the best that she can be. Even more surprisingly, Louis possesses a skill. Sandra receives guidance from him on her professional path. At one point in time, Sandra took into consideration the possibility of appearing in a film. Nevertheless, Louis cautioned her against doing so. In the end, he was correct in his assessment. Even though the movie was not successful, Sandra felt relieved that she had listened to her son. Despite the fact that Lewis is her unofficial manager, he does not particularly enjoy viewing the films that his mother has produced. The fact that he is more interested in Japanese animation and Spider-Man is something that Sandra well comprehends because, well, Lewis has very exceptional taste. Then there is Layla, Sandra's daughter, who became a member of the family in the year 2015 when she was two and a half years old. 
Layla was destined to be with Sandra from the minute she first laid eyes on her, and Sandra knew this from the very beginning. Additionally, her son Louis had a significant role in this. It was he who was the one who yearned for a younger sister, and he made sure that Sandra was aware of this fact. When Layla was eventually able to return home, Louis immediately took a protective stance toward her. There was also a time when a representative from Child Protective Services came to check on Layla, and Louis expressed his concern by asking, You are not going to take her away, are you? During that very instant, Sandra had the realization that Layla was the ideal candidate for their family. Layla's life began with a difficult beginning because she was placed in foster care before being adopted by Sandra. In order to ensure that she had a complete understanding of what Layla needed, Sandra enrolled in specialized seminars to learn how to provide assistance to youngsters who had been through circumstances that were like her own. When Layla was feeling anxious and uncertain, she would sometimes go into the closet and hide there. Furthermore, Sandra had to remind herself that even if her love was powerful, it was not always sufficient to immediately make Layla feel protected at all times. Despite this, Sandra never gave up. The only thing she wanted Layla to know was that she and Louis were always there for her and that they had no plans to leave. Layla developed into a courageous and independent little girl as she got older. The fact that she has such a strong will is evidenced by the fact that Sandra frequently received phone calls from Layla's preschool regarding her getting into little fights with another girl called Everly. Despite this, Sandra did not feel concerned since she was aware that Layla was still in the process of learning how to advocate for herself. Furthermore, even though they had their share of disagreements, Layla and Everly eventually became very good friends. Talking about Layla's remarkable personality is something that Sandra enjoys doing. She is a brave, intelligent, and daring individual. It is even possible, according to Sandra, that Layla will one day be elected president of the United States of America. As a joke, she says that when that occurs, she will be allowed to renovate the White House. Sandra is kept on her toes by Layla's passion for experiencing new things. Irrespective of the location, Sandra is obligated to locate an interesting activity for Layla to participate in. Participating in activities such as climbing, exploring, or attempting something new. Sandra holds both of these children in the highest regard, and she makes sure that they are not in the public eye anymore. Recent reports, on the other hand, have shown her out and about with both of her children together. It is interesting to note that individuals did not anticipate seeing the magnitude of the profound changes that had taken place. A fun day spent with the children. In April of 2024, an extraordinary occurrence took place. A rare family outing in Los Angeles was planned for Sandra, Louis, and Layla, and she decided to go out with them. At the beginning of the day, Sandra appeared to be effortlessly fashionable. She was dressed in a straightforward white t-shirt and jeans, and she had a long beige coat over it. The coat was thrown over her shoulders and moved gently as she walked. She wore a pair of Birkenstock Boston clogs, which were a perfect complement to the combination of neutral tones that she wore in her ensemble. Her hair was pulled back into a low bun, which gave her an exquisite yet laid-back appearance. She paired her dress with a sophisticated pair of sunglasses that masked her face, adding a sense of mystery to the ensemble. Her hair was tied back in a low bun. When Sandra was walking down the street, she was accompanied by her two children, each of whom had a distinct sense of style, with her daughter Layla, who was 11 years old at the time. Wearing a white Nike tracksuit, she appeared to be both comfortable and sporty. It appeared as though she was prepared for anything because she was wearing a pair of stylish Air Jordan sneakers. As he strolled behind his mother, her son Louis, who is now 14 years old, appeared to be a mature and mature individual. Gray sweatpants and a black graphic sweatshirt were the only items of clothing he wore, and he wore warm slippers on his feet. The fact that Lewis had grown so much was the thing that truly attracted everyone's attention. Both his mother and his sister were now dwarfed by his height. Even though no one knew exactly where they were going, the three of them walked down the street together, giving the impression that they were the ideal trio. In a special appearance, little Lewis was seen wearing a mask. Adding to the mystery of the trip with his mother, Sandra Bullock and her children had a relaxing day, enjoying a peaceful moment together. The scene of Sandra holding her daughter Layla's hand, walking together, 
brought joy to anyone who witnessed it. In a touching moment, Sandra stopped to chat with Layla, then gently kissed her on the cheek, showing her deep love for her daughter. Since the death of her longtime boyfriend, Brian Randall, this trip was one of the few times Sandra was seen with her children. As a single mother, Sandra has always tried her best to protect her children from danger. However, fame also brings unforeseen risks. A horrifying event occurred in 2014 when a man named Joshua Corbett began following Sandra, believing that she was his wife. In his diary, he wrote terrifying things, claiming Sandra and Lewis as his own. One night in June 2014, while Sandra was at home in Los Angeles, Corbett sneaked into her house. Although she was alone, Sandra remained calm and called the police, which saved her from a potentially dangerous situation. Even after Joshua Corbett's arrest, Sandra Bullock still faced serious psychological consequences. In an interview in 2021, she shared about the lingering feelings of fear from the incident, sometimes just looking out the car window. Sandra could burst into tears because the fear still haunted her. As a single mother, she also worried about how this might affect her son, Louis, and did not want him to experience the same emotions. Luckily, Louis was not home the night of the incident, but the memories of the break-in still haunted Sandra. In addition, in the early years of her career, she also faced some difficult situations on set. She once shared that at that time, she felt helpless and had to overcome the problem with humor although this could not completely solve the problem. Sandra later expressed sympathy for those in the entertainment industry who have endured similar experiences. Negative stories circulating in the industry sometimes damage the reputations of those not involved, and Sandra spoke out against this, affirming the difficulty of women in the industry when faced with pressure and inaccurate rumors. When people started criticizing and shaming women who had been hurt, Sandra Bullock always stood up for them encouraging silence from those who did not understand the situation. When she learned about the attacks of Harvey Weinstein, Sandra's anger gradually turned to sadness and deep sympathy for the women who had gone through it. Despite the heartbreaking events that happened, her greatest joy and comfort still came from her children. For Sandra, being a mother is her number one priority, and she always makes time to be present in her children's lives. However, she also admits that being a mother has its challenges especially when raising her son Lewis in a society that is still very racist. Sandra started talking to Lewis early on about this topic to help him understand the realities of the world. Although he was young and may not have understood everything, Louis was aware that some people tend to judge based on the color of his skin. Sandra also wants her son to understand other social injustices, such as sexism and homophobia. As a white mother of a black child, Sandra has shared her concerns about the difficulties her son may face when he comes out into the world. She worries that her insecurities may affect his experiences, but she tries to strike a balance between protecting him and helping him face reality. Lewis has been exposed to racism from a young age, and Sandra does not hide anything from him. She allows him to follow the news to gain more knowledge and prepare him for the challenges he may face in the future. What do you think about the way Sandra protects her child? Do you like her way of doing things? Please share your thoughts in the comment section below. We would love to hear from you. And don't forget to like the video and subscribe to the channel for more interesting updates. Thank you and see you in the next video.